Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Friday, August the 7th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. O Lord, what is man that you regard him, or the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Flash forth the lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Rescue me and deliver me from the many waters, from the hand of foreigners, whose mouths speak lies, and whose right hand is the right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon a ten-stringed harp I will play to you who gives victory to kings, who rescues David, his servant, from the cruel sword. New Testament reading today is our beginning uh, series of readings on St. Paul's letter, first letter to the Corinthians, beginning in chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother, Sophanes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there is no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people, that there is quarreling among you by our brothers. What I mean is, each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of Stephanus, Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, 
and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is Part 2, not Part 3, of Article 28 on Church Authority, because I was unable to do evening prayer last night. So we will do Part 2 tonight, and then Monday night we will finish it, and Tuesday begin the Apology. So once again, this is Article 28, the last article in the Augsburg Confession about uh, church authority, and it goes beyond that, too. It talks about uh, you know, rituals, rubrics, all the stuff we actually do when we do church and how most of it is really up to us to do. It's neither commanded nor forbidden. And you'll get it as you listen to it, and then when we study it further in the Apology, you'll get it even more clearly. So picking up where we left off in paragraph 30. So there is also a dispute about whether or not bishops or pastors have the right to introduce ceremonies in the church and to make laws about meets, holy days, and grades, that is, orders of ministers, and so on. Those who say that the bishops do have this right refer to the testimony of Christ in John 16, 12, and 13. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. They also refer to the example of the apostles, who commanded that Christians abstain from blood and from things strangled, Acts 15, 20, and 29. They refer to the Sabbath day as having been changed into the Lord's day, contrary to the Decalogue as they understand it. In fact, they make more of the supposed change of the Sabbath day than any other example they can think of. They say that the church's authority is so great it has even done away with one of the Ten Commandments. But on this question for our part, as we have shown earlier, we teach that bishops have no authority to decree anything against the gospel. The canonical laws teach the same thing. It is against scripture to establish or require the observance of any traditions for the purpose of making satisfaction for sins, or to merit grace and righteousness. When we try to merit justification by observing such things, we cause great harm to the glory of Christ's merit. It is quite clear that by such beliefs, traditions have almost multiplied to an infinite degree in the church, while at the same time the doctrine about faith and the righteousness through faith has been suppressed. Gradually, more holy days were made, fasts appointed, new ceremonies and services in honor of saints instituted. These those responsible for such things thought that by these works they were meriting grace. So the penitential canons increased. We still see some traces of this in the satisfactions. Those who establish such traditions are acting contrary to God's command when they locate sin in foods, days, and similar things. They burden the church with bondage to the law as if there needs to be something similar to the services commanded in Leviticus. See Leviticus chapters 1 through 7, in order to merit justification. They say that Christ has committed the arrangement of such services to the apostles and bishops. They have, a, they have written about the law of Moses in such a way that the popes have been misled to some degree. This is how they have burdened the church by making it a mortal sin, even if nobody else is offended, to do manual labor on holy days or to skip the canonical hours or that certain foods dirty the conscience, or that fasting is a work that appeases God. Or they say that, in a reserved case, sin can only be forgiven by the person who reserved the case, even though canon law speaks only of reserving the ecclesiastical penalty, not the guilt. Who has given the bishops the right to lay those traditions on the church by which they snare consciences? In Acts 15.10, Peter forbids us from putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, and Paul says in 2 Corinthians 13.10 that the authority given to him was for edification, not for destruction. Why do the adversaries increase sins with their traditions? There are clear testimonies that forbid creating traditions in such a way as to suggest that they merit grace or are necessary to sal for salvation. Paul says in Colossians 2.16, Therefore let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink, or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. And later, If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to the things that all perish as they are used, 
according to human precepts and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom, Colossians 2, 20-23. Also in Titus 1.14, he openly forbids traditions with these words, not devoting themselves to Jewish myths and the commands of people who turn away from the truth. In Matthew 15, 14, Christ says of those who require traditions, let them alone, they are blind guides. In verse 13, he rejects such services. Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. If bishops have the right to burden churches with infinite traditions and to snare consciences, why does Scripture so often forbid making and listening to traditions? Why does it call them the teachings of demons? 1 Timothy 4.1 did the Holy Spirit warn of these things in vain? Therefore, ordinances instituted as though they are necessary, or with the view that they merit grace, are contrary to the gospel. Therefore, it follows that it is not lawful for any bishop to institute and require such services. It is necessary that the doctrine of Christian freedom be preserved in the churches. In other words, the bondage of the law is not necessary in order to be justified, as it is written in the Epistle to the Galatians. Do not submit again to a yoke of slavery, Galatians 5.1. It is necessary for the chief article of the gospel to be preserved, namely, that we obtain grace freely by faith in Christ, and not by certain observances or acts of worship devised by people. And we will finish this article on Monday evening. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, we thank you that you have redeemed us poor and condemned creatures, not by any of our works, merit, or worthiness, but by your holy suffering, death, and shedding of blood. O Lord, your suffering was great, your torment was heavy. We cannot comprehend how many your stripes, how deep your wounds, or the bitterness and painfulness of your death. How inexpressible is your love that reconciled us to your heavenly Father. In great fear of death, you sweat blood on the Mount of Olives, drops of blood that fell upon the earth, and there, abandoned by all your disciples, you willingly gave yourself into the hands of those who led you mercilessly, bound hard and cruel, from one unjust judge to another. You were falsely accused and condemned, spit upon, scoffed at, and struck in the face with fists. For the sake of our misdeeds, you were hit, whipped, crowned with thorns, and treated wretchedly, like a worm and not a man. You were despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, so that even a heathen heart took pity and said, Behold the man. For the sake of our sin, you were counted a sinner and hung up between two evildoers as a curse. You were pierced in hands and feet with nails, and in your highest thirst you were given vinegar and gall to drink. Finally, in great pain, you gave up your spirit so that you could pay our debt, and we could be healed by your wounds. O Lord Jesus Christ, for this and all your other suffering and pain, we give you thanks and praise. We pray you, let your holy bitter suffering and death not be lost on us, but grant that at all times this may be our comfort, and that we may boast in it and that as we ponder it, all evil desire in us may be snuffed out and subdued, and all virtue may be implanted and increased, so that we, having died to sin, may live in righteousness, following the example you have left us, walking in your footsteps, enduring evil with patience, 
and suffering injustice, injustice with a good conscience. Amen. O God, whose infinite love restores to the right way those who err, gathers the scattered, and preserves those whom you have gathered of your tender mercy, pour out on your Christian people the grace of unity that all schisms being healed, your flock, fathered to the true shepherd of your church, may serve you in all faithfulness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.